One, this isn't a mean Karen or Kevin story, but I did find it a bit funny. Backstory. I live in New Zealand, but I'm from the USA, and I used to work in a few supermarkets here in New Zealand before I completed my training and started working in healthcare. I was leaving work a little late, and I ducked into the supermarket to pick up something on behalf of my mother-in-law. I was speaking with her on the phone to clarify her preference for the item when I noticed a young man with his friends patiently standing next to me, looking like he wanted to ask me something. I had heard him speaking with his friends, so I knew he was a tourist from either Canada or the USA. I assumed he heard my accent and was waiting to ask me about where to find something, or a Kiwi substitution for an American item. We immigrants gotta help each other. When I got off the phone, he politely asked me where he could find maraschino cherries, which I actually did know isn't carried by this or any local supermarket, so I advised, no, but there would probably be some other options available. He seemed confused by my answer, so I offered to help. I took him to another aisle and showed him the candied cherries. I uh, just still know if they'll work with the cocktails I have planned for tonight. Oh sure, that's a bit tricky. There's some preserved cherries over there, but for something like that, I really don't know. But we can ask the liquor section. The guys there might have something. I led him to the liquor section, noticing he looked more and more confused by the second. I was wondering why he looked so confused. He looked even more confused watching me interact with the liquor section manager that we happened upon. When I came back, I let him know that the only cherry options in this store were the ones I'd shown him, and that there was an international grocery store nearby I could give him directions to. He looked very confused. And then it dawned on me. My nurse's uniform was black with lime green piping. Guess what the logo and uniform colors of this supermarket are. I laughed and said, because I don't work here. Really? Yeah, I'm a nurse, I say, pointing to the healthcare logo on my top. Oh, no way. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Why didn't you say so? I didn't realize you thought I'd worked here. I just thought you heard my accent and figured I'd know where to find American stuff. And I always try to help. Saving lives by day and cocktail parties by night, huh? <laughs> At your service. We shook hands and wished each other well. And that's the end. Not a social justice story or anything. But I still think about it. And it's been five years. Hope you all enjoyed. 2. I used to work grocery. At my store, we had the break room at the back, which, toward the end of my employment, I rarely used, because I had a boss who was a micromanaging asshat and loved to call people over the intercom who were on their breaks. If I never had to hear his voice again, it'd be too soon. Maybe one day I'll post the amount of BS he pulled. Anyway. And outside there was a small bench off to the side of the store, and well away from the front doors, that a lot of the employees used to use to take smoke breaks. During this particular time, I was on parking lot duty, and it was payday. I was sitting by the benches, grabbing a breather, waiting for more carts to wander out, when one of my favorite co-workers happened by for his check. We sat out for a minute and talked. I went on about how today was just the day from hell, and everyone was just super angry. Our boss was up to his antics, as he is. We all hated him. Maybe save one employee who sucked up to him, and I'm just over it. As it happens, around the corner from the benches, a customer was sitting right there, eavesdropping, and confronted me, saying, You should be thankful to even have a job right now. People are struggling out there looking for work, and here you are complaining about how hard you have it. You should be ashamed. I just uttered a, thanks for sharing, have a nice day, and left it, thinking nothing of it. About two days later, I roll into work and immediately get called into the office. I'm used to this by now, because the office is up a big flight of stairs, and normally people in my job class get called up to the office to, say, ferry paperwork to and from outer departments, because no one else wanted to use those damn stairs. 
Not this time. It was regarding a customer complaint. The very same customer that got on my case a couple days prior. She actually went through the motions of calling corporate and saying I should be fired for being an ungrateful employee when there are better people out there who need jobs. It thankfully didn't result in me getting fired. Corporate didn't look much into it. They just gave the customer the old, we're so sorry, we'll forward this to the store manager and make it right. And it was forwarded to the store manager. The store manager, who I was totally cool with, just said, Hey, I don't really care, but next time y'all are talking, just keep it down and be cognizant of who's around you, okay? Thankfully, customers like that were very few and far between. We had a few stinkers, sure, but most of the strife at my jobs was actually the co-workers. 3. I was wandering around one of my local craft stores in town, in search of some new markers and ink wheels. And yes, I found the perfect ones for me. So cute. I caught sight of an extremely middle-aged woman, and what I assumed to be her son who looked no older than about 11 to 13. This kid has headphones in and was watching his phone, and his mother looked completely lost in the store. Around the third or fourth time I saw her, it was a really small shop, she started giving me strange dirty looks, and me, being someone who doesn't like trouble, decided it'd be best to hide closer to the back until she moves along. Plus, the things I needed were farther back anyways, so win-win. While I was testing one of the test markers on a notebook display, I suddenly hear a buggy roll into my aisle. I look up, and sure enough, it's a lady. Excuse me? Oh, yes, ma'am. Am I in your way? I'm so... I know you've seen me wandering this whole place, and you haven't asked me once if I needed help. Ma'am? Workers are supposed to check in on their guests. Did you even learn any manners at home? I'm sorry, I don't think I understand. Do you think I work here? Yes, don't you? No, ma'am, I don't. I'm sorry, but even if I did, I don't think something like this would warrant a screaming match. The lady was quiet. I don't know if she was embarrassed or something or what, but she certainly didn't speak other than a few huffs and such as she looked around like she was trying to find her words. And yes, her son was completely oblivious the whole time. Anyhow, I do come here a lot, so if you want, I can try to help. Yes, please. So I did. I led the lady to what she needed, just some simple molds and soap bases. They have them in a weird spot, so I don't blame her for getting lost. And she looked so relieved. She looked very embarrassed for a moment, then told me about how she was just stressed because her eldest recently moved states with her boyfriend, and she's been with about six or seven months long distance. On top of other things, she was just stressed and took it out on someone. I don't know why she ranted to me, but I told her it was okay, and that she was worrying as a mother, and finished grabbing my things. And lady, if you somehow hear this, I hope you're feeling better. 4. While my co-worker was at lunch one day, I was left all on my own on the shop floor in the women's clothing section. A lady came stalking up to the till with a navy blue top on a hanger. She thrusts it at me and asks demandingly, Do you have this in green? I said to her very politely in return, I don't think so, but I can check the back of the rail if you'd like. Sometimes tops will get buried at the back by accident. I already had a look and there were no green ones out there. She informs me, huffing and crossing her arms. Then I'm afraid we don't have any. I inform her with my friendly smile. Aren't there any in the back? She asks, her voice raising and pitch. I'm fairly sure we don't have any back there, as we always try to have out some of every color we have in stock, but I'll go and check one moment. I quickly go across the shop floor. I made my way into the back room. Once inside, I went to the area where the tops are stocked. I checked the hanging rails, but no, there is no sign of green tops in this style there. Other tops similar to it, but not the exact one the lady had shown me. I come back out, make my way back over to the till and shake my head at the lady, saying apologetically at the same time. No, there are no green tops in this style back there either. Would you like me to check on the system if we have any coming in? Yes. 
she says in an annoyed voice. I go over to a different part of the till area where the stock computer is kept and start up the computer. For you younglings reading this story, this was an old black screen with a white flashing rectangular cursor type of computer where writing came out white. I turned to the lady and asked politely, May I take the top to enter the item code so I can find it in the system? Wordlessly, she thrust the top at me. I accept it, carefully type in the code on the tag, and then handed it back to the lady, saying, again politely, Thank you for that, ma'am. She accepted the top back from me with a grumble, the only part of which I heard being so slow. When the page on the computer finally came up, I quickly noticed something. The color green was not listed as an option for this top, meaning more than likely this top did not come in green at all, which explained why there were not any on the shop floor or in the stockroom. I internalize my groan because I am sure this lady is not going to like this piece of information in the slightest. Ma'am, this top is not listed as coming in green. We have a similar top in green if you'd prefer. I didn't get to finish my sentence, she interrupted me. No, 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 I want this one in green. I'm sorry, madam, there is not green in that style. I tell her as calmly as possible. How can there be no green? She demands of me. I stood there thinking, I don't know, I don't work for them, but somehow I managed to say instead, I'm afraid I don't know. Is there another way to check I can get it in green? She asks huffily. I think for a moment, then an idea came to me. I can find the company catalogue just to make sure it doesn't come in green and we simply didn't choose to stop green. Yes, go do that! She says enthusiastically. I am sure she is imagining her victory where there is a green version of the top in the catalogue. However, I am not so sure she will get that victory as we usually order at least one of every colour available of an item. Unless there were a tremendous number of different colours. I go back to the office this time. I go over to the bookshelf which is full of catalogues. And after a bit of a search, I eventually manage to find the correct catalogue. When I returned to the front with it, the lady's eyes went wide. You see, this catalogue was huge. It could have been used as a brick in building a giant's castle or as a doorstop. I heave it onto the top next to the till. It makes a satisfying bang as I place it down. I open it up, find the correct section, go to it, and after turning a few pages, I locate the item. When I find the top, I notice right away that it doesn't come in green, only white, black, gray, and navy blue. I look up at the lady, turn the catalog towards her, point at her top, and say as I move my finger over to the available colors, as you can see, madam, it only comes in black, white, navy blue, or grey. There is no green option. Well, that's stupid! She exclaims in fury. There is another top similar to it here, which comes in green. I point at one slightly lower on the page. The only difference between this top and the one she had picked up, the ends of the three-quarter length sleeves were turned up. She glares at me and slowly says, I don't that. I want this. In green. But it doesn't come in green, madam. All I can do for you is offer other similar style tops, which we can order for you in green. I tell her, still trying to stay calm. This is stupid, she says to me again, before shoving the top into my chest and saying furiously, do something about this. I felt like yelling at her, what do you want me to do? I take a deep breath and manage to say in an even voice, As I said before, all I can do is order a top in a similar style in green, or I can order the top you want in another colour. She let out a frustrated scream and stormed off. When my co-worker returned and I told her what happened, she let out a deep sigh and said to me, I bet I know who that was. She then described the lady to me perfectly, and when I said that was her, she told me that this lady is well known for making all sorts of impossible demands from staff, and not to worry about it if she did complain, because the management knew what she was like, and wouldn't reprimand me over what had happened. I still wonder to this day why that lady with such a terrible reputation amongst the staff and managers was never banned from the store. 5. 
I work in a grocery store, and the way that sales show up in our registered screens is item, full price, with savings, amount discounted, directly beneath that. It's something that confuses a lot of customers. And the vast majority of the time, it's not a big deal. People just generally ask why their item is showing up at full price, and are patient with me while I show them the discount right underneath it. I get why it confuses folks, but I can't change it. So the best I can do is explain it to them, you know? I had a woman come through my line the other day, with a couple of sodas that were on sale, and the sale rung up correctly, like how I described. She immediately started getting angry with me, asking why it wasn't giving her the sale. I tried to explain that the sale was underneath the items on the screen, but she didn't listen at all, and kept on demanding to know where her sale was without letting me explain it. I started walking around to the customer-facing screen to show her, but she just went, No, 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 you stay put. I don't want you out here. I want to see it on my receipt. Print it out and give it to me. And the register automatically prints the receipt out once the transaction is finished. But my computer was showing me that the transaction hadn't finished yet, so I couldn't print a receipt. A lot of the time when this happens, it's because a customer missed a prompt on the pin pad. And so I just checked with them to make sure that's all taken care of. I asked her if she'd finished the transaction on the pin pad, and she went, in the most angry, condescending voice I've heard in a long time, Yes, obviously I finished paying. I've done my job. You're the one not doing her part. Give me my receipt. Now she's just getting angrier and angrier, and by this point, I'm just teetering on the edge of an anxiety attack. There were no managers or coordinators around either, and a line is building up behind the customer. And I was internally freaking out because I didn't know why the transaction didn't go through or what I should do, when all of a sudden I hear her go, Oh, okay, I see what I did. And she pressed a button on the pin pad, and the transaction went through. She did miss a prompt. So, with the transaction all finished, I get her receipt, and she snatches it out of my hand and starts looking it over. I start trying to show her where the sale is on the receipt, but she cuts me off and goes, Quiet! Let me figure out what happened here! And after a few seconds she goes, Oh, okay, I see it. The discount shows up under the sodas. And she walks off. It's a good thing my shift ended not too long after that, because I was having a full-blown anxiety attack by the time she was done. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Adventures in Fast Food and Retail, episode 150. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Alright, let's see. Today's date is the 23rd. I believe we may have a birthday shout-out today. Let me check. Do, 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 do. Aha! Okay, I do. Uh, today's birthday shout-out goes to Phaedra. Uh, uh, Phaedra von Wolf. Okay, cool. Uh, do, do. <laughs> uh, Phaedra is, uh, begins their 41st orbit around the sun today. I uh, hope you're having a good birthday, Phaedra. Uh, please make sure that, uh, if not today, if you're busy, because uh, people sometimes do get busy on their birthdays, as soon as you can, take some time just for you, because you deserve it. Okay, and I'd like to sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Phaedra. Happy birthday to you. <sighs> All right, hey. What was a nice smell of feeling after I sang that? Uh, where are we now? Also, leaves my brain a bit scrambled. <laughs> Gotta hit those high notes. Oh, yes. Uh, just if anyone has a birthday shout out they would like to have themselves, you can send that along to King of the Cities at gmail.com. That's kingofthecities at gmail.com. Just, uh, you'll find that in the description of every video. Pop it along, name of the person, when you are. Uh, try and give me a little bit of notice. Um, uh, but if it's, an, if it's an emergency, send it along and I'll pop it in the next available video. It just means it might not go up in that day. 
But if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it too. And you will also find a link to the Hellfreezer Teespring store in the description. Uh, if, you know, the, the birthday person in question is a bit of a Hellfreezer fan, not saying that you have to get them Hellfreezer merch, but it might be appreciated, you never know. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.